Facebook group uh, explaining why it is that Planet X is always seen close into the Sun. We had a new uh, view of Planet X. Uh, I got this off of Pole Shift Ning. Um, here you can see the little lump on the side there, the classic angle, classic location. Uh, these are lens flares here. Um, so as you can see again it's showing up close into the Sun. So I want to explain why it is that uh, Planet X does this. <clears throat> Let's start with an overview of uh, the orbit of Planet X. Um, now this is wrong. Nibiru or Planet X does not orbit in, in an elliptical fashion. Um, so this is a fallacy. It orbits like this. Uh, we'll start here at 2002 when it entered our solar system. Uh, creeped around the Sun. Now I'm using Zeta Talk as a backup. I always use it, Zeta Talk Science as a backup. Um, and of course uh, this is done in 2013. As you can see here uh, Planet X has been creeping through the solar system since 2003. And so what happens is when Planet X is finally released from its uh, from the ecliptic zone, where there's a great deal of um, energy flows happening there, uh, it quickly goes past Earth, causes a uh, a magnetic lock on to Earth, and passes by quite quickly. And Earth falls at the crust, and then lets go, and then the um, the uh, the crust is is at a different location, but the oceans keep going, which is why you have the pole shift wave danger, which is why you have to be on it's safe uh, safe from the sea. But that's another another video report. So Planet X carries on out into space, and it comes back. They say I think it's seven years later. Uh, on the light blue line is the is a return path and it goes around the other side of the Sun and then it whips out um, uh, it goes back to the Sun's binary twin which is here the dark it's a dark star a dead Sun um, 68 trillion miles and uh, obviously it goes around it uh, like so and then it starts the the cycle over again on, on the incoming in the blue he, in the center area here is a gravity balance between the Sun and uh, its binary t twin. So Planet X slows down dramatically here and may spend maybe 500,000 years uh, dithering here, moving very slowly. And it's only until it gets close to one of those gravity foci, such as our Sun or the binary, sin, uh, binary, binary twin, uh, is it, it speeds up, it goes very fast. I remember reading in Zeta Talk that it approaches the speed of light. So that's the orbit, and they call it a sling orbit. Now, let's look at what uh, Planet X is up against in our solar system. Now, this is obviously only what we're what what I'm aware of and and what I've read. Um, now, we're going to move over to here, and we're going to switch gears here. <coughs> This is a uh, this is a profile of the Sun, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. So basically, this right here, uh, and this arc, is the outer edge of our solar system, defined as defined by um, <clears throat> the Sun's <clears throat> uh, extent of solar wind reach. It stops here, and then outside of this, you have the uh, interstellar space, which is a whole other ball game. So we're in the bubble here, this big bubble. Now this distance here is about 9.3 billion miles. As an example, how how how, how big that is. Uh, Pioneer two was launched in 1979. Pardon me, 1977, and uh, it traveled. It, it traveled at fifty-five thousand kilometers an hour, 
and it went it took over 38 years at that speed to clear the Sun's heliosphere or the bubble so that's how big it is now here we have another representation of what I'm saying this is the the heliosphere here so the Sun is emitting uh, massive particles called solar wind or cosmic radiation a cosmic wind and it blows it out to its extent to the farthest extent it can now what happens is this entire mass of, of uh, area here is full of atomic uh, particles and circulating and near the Sun they recirculate now there's another one there's another you can see here of the more of the inner disturbance of the solar system this is the magnetic field of the Sun as it rotates blowing out these waves so there's a great deal of forces atomic particles all happening in this in this great big heliosphere around the Sun so when planet X enters the solar system it's got a it's got to fight through all that cosmic wind that wind activity now that's the only there's probably many other uh, things happening many other uh, part uh, atomic particles the Zeta say there are I think they said there's a thousand one atomic particles and man is only aware of like 30 or 50 or 100 or something like that so there's many more particles involved so here is planet X creeping through the inner solar system <laughs> fighting the the uh, massive uh, flows on the ecliptic now the ecliptic uh, to go back to this one here you see the disks of the orbit orbital plane of all the different planets this disk that's commonly referred to as the ecliptic so planet X is fighting its way through that now I want to go to another one of my drawings uh, let me find it here this one okay so this is planet X that's the Sun this is Earth this is Venus and this is Earth's dead twin um, this light blue, this light circle here is called what the Zeta cup, the Zeta, uh, the Zetas call uh, the cup, and that's formed by a very simple pr uh, principle. When you've got uh, a blockage in a flow, uh, the, the the flow moves around the blockage and creates a back eddy behind it, and that's really is that's what's happening. Only instead of water or whatever or air. It happens to be uh, cosmic particles, uh, atomic particles from the sun, blown out from the sun. So Earth is caught in this cup with the other two planets. Uh, this also means that Earth is stopped in orbit. Now that's another discussion, of course, um, but we wouldn't be seeing Earth's dead twin um, to the west if you weren't stopped in orbit. That's all I'm going to say right now. I can argue this and prove it. Uh, I already have actually a drawing made up uh, which will come out in my next newsletter which uh, pretty much nails it to the wall to anybody who wants to figure it out with me uh, if you read it and look at the at, at, at my graphic uh, it's quite extensively uh, detailed but you'll see that it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the earth is indeed stopped in orbit anyways here it is in the cup standing in front of planet X now that means uh, that as planet X advances in a uh, clockwise mo movement through through the around the Sun clockwise against Earth and the rest of the planets anti-clockwise movement around the Sun naturally uh, on December 25th 2003 uh, Earth encountered uh, planet X moving from the opposite direction popping up from the solar system south 
and into uh, the orbital plane. So Earth had no choice but to stop. So, er so s ever since then, as Planet X has been creeping in its clockwise uh, uh, motion through the inner solar system, Earth and, and all the other uh, planets in this cup have been pushed back. So what that means is that the Earth and Planet X are in a lockstep and that means that when Planet X advances a mile, Earth retreats a mile. Planet X advances for a few weeks, for, for you know, for 20, 20 miles, Earth in the same period of time backs up the 20 miles. So they're locked into this while Planet X advances, is pushing, pushing them back. Uh, also keep in mind that since uh, the Planet X and, and the planets in the particle flow cup are kept uh, are one unit. They're one unit. They're moving together. Uh, so the only other player in, in this uh, drama is the sun, and it's really an access point. So you've got uh, Planet X, Earth, Earth's dead twin, and Venus all sitting on a swing together. And the axis, and the swing is hung from the from the sun. So it only the sun only is a backdrop to the drama between Earth and Planet X. So this is why um, Planet X is always viewed close into the sun because of the angle that has been established between uh, between Planet X and Earth and the sun. And that angle has remained uh, more or less the same, which is why uh, we have sightings like uh, this here that I referred to earlier. This is a constant. You always see Planet X here. And the reason for that, as I'm saying, is because we are locked in lockstep with Planet X and the Sun is just an axis point. So it doesn't, for that angle doesn't change very much. The only thing that's going to change this is when Planet X speeds up and um, uh, it achieves a much higher velocity as it leaves our solar system. And that is, that's pulse. The first thing that I want you to notice is this is our little orb with the dots on it. I think this is the way it's really moving in the sky. Watch what happens next. Have you seen this with me? Unbelievable footage caught from Pompano Beach. Next, we want to move to the photographs for the day, and I just don't want to delay anything and just jump right in. Um, these are all photos taken from today. This is just an interesting view. Um, we know that we're getting lens flares, but relative to that photo that we just saw, where we saw the actual ball and the and the um, what I think is the star, both moving in uh, synchronous synchronous type uh, movement with the sun. Um, then we've got this shocking photograph um, from uh, the webcams. I, I'm having a hard time talking, man. I mean, this is uh, some unbelievable stuff. Uh, this is one of the webcams in in Germany, and um, from today. And we actually have a picture of the red dot and the other object um, that we've been talking about. Crazy. Um, I'll put the link in for you to go look at that website. This is from, uh, uh, viewers are getting better and better footage. Um, this actually so shows that little red or a little red orb shown as a hexagon whenever we look at it from the space station. But also, look, they caught the... Um, object that is the big orb and the little orb object. Um, unbelievable from today. Um, this is clouds from the UK um, showing the red either iron oxide and some people are postulating phosphorus might be part of that mix. Um, now here's the red halos that I was talking about. Um, this actually I caught a picture from my backyard today as well Oh my gosh, look who's hiding behind the halo. 
unbelievable shot from today another one from today that is a lens flare I, I'm convinced of that but there again there's that red halo now you'd think if there was a halo around the Sun wouldn't it be brighter on the inside of the halo just a thought um, again this is light being obfuscated from the earth from some kind of a red cloud uh, made of either phosphorus or iron oxide now what we got here is a lens flare that actually refracts the object um, what's interesting about it is we're getting the double dot refractions lately I don't know what that's all about again just more interesting phenomenon showing up on cameras around the world <laughs> uh. and again sometimes the halo shows up as that red um, color and sometimes it almost appears to be a mult like a rainbow color um, halo um, and again we have coined a new term on WSO uh, I call these chem dogs now th this is uh, pho photography that you I'm gonna actually take you through an in-depth study in honor of my friend Roy who did a ton of work on it and I owe it to him to show you guys this stuff but we're actually seeing the the red object now from the all sky cams I'm gonna get into a deep study with here in a minute but France is the place that we were seeing this phenomenon uh, very clearly today and I have a much more um, in-depth study of it um, to show you here in a moment but look at this shocking footage from today or actually I'm sorry from March 2nd that we got from France Um, this is from a, uh, a subscriber, um, you know, in Denmark that was talking about her experience and dream. Go ahead and just stop it and read it. It's interesting. I just, I just want to show you that I'm getting this stuff from all over the world. Again, there's the red halo again. It's around the sun today. This is from California, I believe. We're, we're getting these from all over the United States and all over the world now. So this is a common view, this halo. And if you look up in the sun, you probably can see it. Oh, uh, this is just one of my subs that's helping me with uh, chemicals uh, research and testing of the recent moisture in the soil and things like that to see if we can see what's in the chemtrails. Another German photograph uh, from one of their webcams. Familiar shape. Uh, Huntsville, awesome lady, man. I, uh, she sent me a really encouraging letter. That's why I say awesome lady letter. But um, she's from Huntsville, and she showed a chem dog. But you can see the chem dog is so bright and orange. I'm wondering if they are hiding that, trying to hide that uh, that strange thing we saw in the beginning. Look at this. Um, okay, so these are a series of photographs that I got from uh, a subscriber that's been helping me out. That also has a web channel. I just talked to him about helping him pro promote it, but he got a lot of interesting photographs from around the world. A couple other more uh, ones that we're going to see in a second. Um, this is from 2916, February, uh, and just, you know, people sending me their old sky cams. It's people starting to get more confident about sending me stuff. Um, a, a strange sun effect. This is a. Uh, um, if you look, you know, this is a, uh, I think this is from um, Alaska, thank you. It's just a close-up of the Alaska sky cam, and then somebody did a study on it and actually saw a triangular strange artifact on it and shared it with me. Um, this is from Texas today. Um, there's our orb that we saw in the beginning uh, shot um, that then either was refracting, reflecting, or somehow... Uh, in a synch synchronous orbit, synchronous orbit with the the sun, and another star. Um, this one is convincing to me in the sense that um, uh, this this photo from the UK. Um, sometimes when I see the the circles in the you know like this, it is the sun just poking through a circular sh shape in the cloud. That's why I don't show a lot of your photographs when you send this to me. What's interesting to me about this one is that you can see two distinct orbs um, in that shot, and then in this case we actually caught this and this. Now certainly this could be causing the light over this way. Just interesting in the UK. There it is, man. 
and again this shows the same phenomenon that I was just uh, showing from Pompano Beach but we didn't this this I think that other orb um, I think this is the uh, a star again the red halo today this one's from Southern California Alberta Canada Paris Hawaii check that out man um, this is a recent uh, Vikings um, all credits to the History Channel but uh, they were filming in Ireland this year um, I accidentally caught um, uh, what we've been observing on, on a recent uh, show Vikings Saudi Arabia what's what's the east of Saudi Arabia <laughs> I don't know what is that unbelievable stuff guys happening in the earth okay so those are the photos now I'm gonna take you to the land of Roy because he did one workup that I have never seen on the all sky cams that is one of the all-time greatest workups I've seen so let's let's get started in it Okay, this is from my friend Roy. Again, I'm keeping his um, identity secret um, at, at his request. But this is the iCam or SkyCam, all SkyCam workup that he did from around the world, starting with France, where he caught the object. And you can stop it on any of these images. I'm just going to walk through them very quickly and then stop the video for your later study. This is from Warrensburg. This is from Parc National du Mont. All from the 5th, King's Observatory, Georgia. Very clear yesterday. TAF Observatory in Norway. Turkey. Texas. Chile. Stop in any one of these if you want to look at them closer. Roy, I just got to thank you for your work that you did on this. This is unbelievable. The best study I've ever seen on the All Sky Cam Network that was given to me by Roy, uh, my friend and brother in the Lord. So, in other words, it's getting so close that we can start to blow up these images and look at it from all these different locations around the world. Stop at anyone if you have any questions. He also explains to us the refractions that we're seeing. You guys catching all this? I'll blow this one up a little bit so you can see it better. This one is unbelievable in Turkey where we can actually see. Oh, man. So this is why I'm asking you guys just to like draw close to the Lord, man. He'll come close to you. That's what the gospel is, is that you don't have to be afraid of him anymore. Okay? How about if I boil down the gospel for you in one sentence? You don't have to be afraid anymore.